video is going to be showing you how to do grace. This is grace and grace mirror blocks combined to make our grace quilt. And the supplies that you're going to need to do grace is you're going to need to have some starch, some Marion spray starch to um, starch your fabric. You're going to need some temporary spray adhesive to attach your backing fabric to the back of your hoop. You're going to need your hoop scissors to cut your fabric while it's in the hoop. You're going to need a way to transfer the designs from your computer to your machine. And after your block's completed, you're going to need to have your trimmer or your trimmer um, by George 2.0 in order to trim your blocks up. For your fabric, you're going to need your fabric 1, your fabric 2, your fabric 3, a little square of your fabric 4, your fabric 5, so you're using all the different colors, and also your backing fabric and your lead fabric. For your threads, you're going to need thread B with a matching bobbin, thread C with a matching bobbin, embroidery bobbin thread, and some water-soluble thread, and some batalizer cut big enough to fit in your hoop. To get started making grace, you're going to hoop your batalizer and put neutral thread in the needle and the bobbin, and you're going to sew the design outline. For step two, you're going to place fabric four right side up and stitch the tack down. For step three, you're going to place your lead fabric right side down over the top of fabric four and the machine will stitch a seam. As you can see, Linda is using a stylus here or a tweezers, just something to hold the fabric in place if you need to. For step four, you're going to flip your lead fabric right side up, finger press, and the machine will stitch a tack down. If necessary, you can trim inside the block a scant quarter inch. For step five, you're going to place your fabric three right side down over the lead fabric, and the machine will stitch a seam. Now you can flip your fabric three right side up and finger press. The tack down stitches will be done in step 10. Now we're going to go to step six where you're going to lay your lead fabric right side down over the bottom section and you're going to have the raw edges even and the machine will stitch the seam. And then you can flip the lead fabric right side up, finger press, and the machine will sew the tack down stitch. And then again, you can trim a quarter of an inch inside the block if necessary. And then you can take your fabric three, put it right side down over the lead fabric and the machine will sew a seam. For step nine, you can flip your fabric three right side up, put water soluble thread in the needle only, and the machine will stitch a tack down. For step 10, it's going to now do the tack down stitch up at the top again using the water soluble thread. Now you can trim a scant quarter an inch any area that's inside the block and any area that's on the outside of the block you can leave about a half an inch. For step 11, you're going to place your neutral thread in the needle only and place your lead fabric right side down, raw edges even, and it's going to stitch the seam. For step 11, you can flip your 
lead fabric right side up and finger press and the machine will sew a tack down stitch. And then anything on the inside of the block you can trim a quarter of an inch if necessary and leave about a half an inch or so at the very top on the outside of the block. For step 13 you can take your fabric one and place it right side down, raw edges even over the lead fabric on the right hand side of the block and stitch the seam. After that, you can flip fabric one right side up and you can finger press. The tack down stitch will not be done at this point. It will be done in step 18. So we're going to skip that. Um, instead, what we're going to do is we are going to um, place our lead fabric in step 14 over the raw edges and we're going to sew the seam for the black lead fabric. And then we're going to flip that lead fabric over and finger press and sew the tack down. And then again if you need to trim you can leave about a half an inch on the outside edges of the block and a scant quarter inch on the inside of the block. Here we're also right now going to trim off our red fabric from the right side because now we need it for the left side and we're going to place our fabric one and place it right side down, raw edges even against the lead fabric and the machine will stitch the seam. Now you can place water soluble thread in the needle only and flip your fabric one on the left right side up and finger press and then you can sew the tack down stitch. step 18 you're going to flip the fabric one on the right side of your block, finger press it and sew the tack down stitch on that side. And now you can trim a scant quarter inch inside the block and leave at least a half an inch on the outside of the block. For step 19 you're going to need your neutral thread in the needle only and you're going to place your lead fabric right side down, raw edges even on the left side of the block and stitch the seam. For step 20 you're going to flip your lead fabric right side up and finger press and sew the tack down stitches. And then if you need to trim here you can do that. For step 21 you're going to take the long edge of fabric 5 and you're going to lay it right side down over that lead fabric on the left side of the block. Raw edges even and you're going to stitch the seam. we're going to add the lead fabric to the opposite corner, lay it down, right side down, raw edges even, and stitch that seam. And for step 22, we're going to flip the lead fabric right side up, finger press, and sew a tack down stitches. If you need to trim the fabric, you can do that. Uh, for step 24, we're going to take the long edge of fabric 2, lay it right side down over the lead fabric, and sew the seam. For step 25, you're going to flip your fabric 2 right side up, finger press, and sew the tack down stitches using water soluble thread. For step 26 in the upper left hand corner you're going to flip your fabric 5, finger press and stitch that tack down stitch and then trim if necessary. For step 27 you're going to spray the back of your backing fabric with temporary spray adhesive and adhere to the back of your hoop. Give it a little press so it stays attached to the back. Put it on the machine and you can sew the basting stitches to attach that to the back. For step 28, you're going to place your thread B in the needle and the bobbin. If your machine has an automatic thread cutter, this would be a good time to turn it off. 
and also bring your bobbin thread to the top of the block before you start sewing. Those two things will lead to a much nicer, prettier looking back. And now we can sew the beautiful quilting. For step 29, you're going to put thread C in the needle end in the bobbin. And again, bring your bobbin thread to the top of the block, have your automatic needle threader turned off, and sew the quilting. to show you how to do the grace the whole cloth version look at your fabric and thread key to find out what supplies you will need your very first step you're going to hoop your battleizer place neutral thread in the needle and embroidery bobbin thread in the bobbin and you can sew the placement outline for step two you're going to put water soluble thread in the needle only you're going to spray the wrong side of your backing fabric with temporary spray adhesive and center it and adhere it to the back of your, your hoop. And then you're going to place fabric one over the placement stitch on the front and you'll take it back to the machine and sew the basting stitch using water soluble thread. Step three, you're going to place your quilting thread in the needle and the bobbin. Turn off your automatic thread cutter if your machine has one. Bring your bobbin thread to the top. Those will make for a nice, neater looking back, and you can sew the beautiful quilting. whole cloth block and we're going to trim it up to put in a quilt. We're going to pretend that these two cor corners are for binding. So I'm going to trim through the top layer, the battleizer, and the back layer one quarter inch from the basting line. I'm going to use my trimmer by George 2.0, turn it over, put it on the quarter inch line, trim through all layers, front, back, and battleizer. Same on this corner. So 
So now these two edges are ready for binding. So any edge on any of your blocks that you want to attach binding to, that's what you'll do. These two edges will be attached to the rest of the blocks. So you'll take the front of it, you'll turn it back, take your metal trimmer edge, get right up close to the basting line, and trim off your battleizer and your backing on these two sides. So now we have, we have the backing totally trimmed off and the front we're going to trim three quarters of an inch from the basting line because we're going to join these together in a different method. So I used my highlighter tape and I placed it on my three quarter inch basting line or my three quarter inch line on the ruler and that way I can see through quickly where to go because when you're trimming these you'll be trimming a lot of blocks probably at one time and it's just quicker and easier to have a reference. So there's your grace block trimmed and ready to go. This is our stained glass version of the grace block and we're ready to trim it to put into our quilt. If this corner we're going to be binding, we're going to trim this a quarter inch from the basting line. We'll use our trimmer by George 2.0, turning it over, lining up the basting line with the quarter inch. We're completely removing the top, the battleizer, and the backing. So these two edges are ready for binding. Any of the blocks that you're going to put a binding edge on, that's what you'll do on that edge. These two edges need to be joined to other blocks. So we'll turn our trimmer over where the metal edge is and flip back the fabric of the top of the block and trim off the battleizer and the backing. So the back looks like that. So we have some edges to clean up here. So we'll turn it right side up again and on your trimmer ruler side you'll line up the basting line with the quarter inch. So there is our grace block ready to be put into a quilt.